has not been known. So, so many things have been tied to the cleft, but is, there's no backing yet to tie it down. The studies are going on to find out the effect of this um, alcohol, tobacco, everything on. Okay, tell on about, uh, about the uh, studies that's currently going on at uh, the University of Lagos concerning this cleft. Yes, we have the we have genetic study because um, there are strong evidences that yeah, genetics have part to play. Since we see some of our mothers, they come with their baby, and when they are talking, you can hear Nisa speech, and when you look at their mouth, you see a big cleft there. So, we've been doing study. What we do is that we, we take sample from them, then we do genetic analysis of the, to see whether there are some particular gene that are, that have, that have some problem, maybe mutation or something in the, in the modern, we have actually found some. There's a particular um, syndrome called Van der Waals syndrome. We found out that there are some genes that are, that you have mutation, you have um, defect in those genes that causes that defect. And even the one we find is a, is a novel, is a new finding that has not been reported um, anywhere of the, uh, all over the world. So what we find is that's that particular gene that has problem that actually caused that um, cleft. Okay, now let's talk about the effect of this, uh, whether it's the cleft lip or the cleft of the palate yeah. on the child. The child. Well, the um, effects, you are, there are many effects. Psychological effect, because when children are born, everybody wants to congratulate you, see. So we see some of our mothers, when they have this baby with cleft, what you have is that you have people, uh, people coming and they, they start of stigmatization of what uh, stigmatization, they have not seen the kind of baby before. And so you have the psychological effect even in the family. Most of our mothers, they keep their baby at home. They don't go out until when the surgery is done, which is, and even some of them we have cases that the mother is even chased away from the family because they told the mother, has gone somewhere to bring a bad baby to their family. And we have a series of things where our mothers are, didn't get any support. And so we have stigmatization. And not only that, on the child also, we have some of our children that are supposed to have been in school. They could not go because of this defect. People may have made just of them. Their friends called, called them names. And so, and when you talk of the child in particular, you, feeding is affected. Because usually you feed baby, uh, baby sock, that's their mode of feeding. And when you have this defect, the normal oral seal that will uh, help the baby to suck is not there. So they could not suck as the other, side, or other children does. And even when they have been fed some of the food, they aspirate and they have a chest infection and all that. So their feeding is affected. Not only that, speech, especially those that have the, the cleft palate. You have what we call nasal speech. When they talk to you, you you can pick up the, 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 some sound that are not properly pronounced because air is escaping through the nose. You have that gap there, so you can have all those defects. And even late, if it's not repaired, you can have even facial disfiguration. Because some some of them, uh, we have some part of the face that will not grow, so you have those parts will not grow very well, and you can have what we call facial asymmetry. And that one will tell on the future and do the socio, uh, psychosocial life of the, of the children. Even teeth eruption, the normal eruption phase will be disturbed. And even the growth of the jaw generally will be, be disturbed. And that's why we target the early stage for the repair. For repairs. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll come to the repair issues. Mm -hmm. But how often do we see this in, in babies when they are born? What's the statistics like? Well, the... Uh, the worldwide prevalence is maybe one in 1,000 baht so have been reported, but we are just trying to call it um, data for Nigeria. And the last one that we collected is about one in 800,000 baht, which actually is hospital-based, so it will not be a representative uh, uh, figure because we have most of the, this baht taking place in the 
in the uh, bathrooms and other satellite uh, uh, maternity homes. So but that just give an idea. It's about one in, in 800, and in that's eight, what you, yeah, for your own center? Yes, yeah, yeah, that. No, for Nigeria. We try to collect data from all the but centers. But in, in your own center, how often yeah. do you say this? Uh, well, it's, as, as we see it quite often, at least for the clinic this, maybe about two or three cases each clinic this. That's a weekly clinic this, but actually see referral center. So you expect babies to be coming from other... As for those who even want to report it at all and not yeah, hide the babies that, 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 And don't hide the babies because some of these babies, they may be not even get to the hospital before. But as you said, it's nothing to hide about. No, it's, it's nothing to hide because okay. see, it's something that has remedy. Remedy, okay. Yes, we'll just take a quick break yeah. and when we come back, we'll be talking about the remedy for cleft lip and palate. Just stay with us on Health Matters. At first, it's only anticipation that something is about to happen. This is one thing that makes life interesting. To compete not only with players across the field, but across the world. It makes me feel joy when we win and sorrow when we lose. The action and reaction colliding, falling, dropping, despite the odds. I love it because it brings me tears, tears of victory, tears of joy. The skill that leads to the pass, the pass that leads to the short, the short that leads to the goal, the goal that determines the ultimate channel sports, defining the moment of true sport. Welcome back, you're watching Health Matters on channels television and we're talking about a cleft lip and palate the courses and of course how to manage it and we have in the studio uh, an oral and maxillofacial surgeon and lecturer in, at the college of medicine university of lagos um before we went on that break yeah. you were talking about the fact that these can be fixed yes can be fixed. so let's talk about this how early can cleft and palate lip be fit uh, be fixed. Be fixed. Actually, uh, the treatment is surgery. What and the surgery entails uh, repairing the gap. We want to repair the gap. The gap. Um, actually, we do it at different ages, depending on the part of the face involved. Actually, okay. the lip comes first, and the lip usually we do it at three months of age. When maybe it's three months. We invite, uh, we take the baby to the theater for the repair. But before the repair, we, there, we build up the child because there are some criteria that must be met before we can take the baby for surgery. So when we see a new baby, we teach the mother how to feed the baby, how to take care of the baby so that the baby can have adequate weight and adequate um, blood level for the surgery. So at three months, if the baby satisfies all the criteria, then we take the baby in for surgery. For the palate, the one inside, usually we take a longer time because we allow the, the face to grow to a certain level before we repair. And usually we repair that one later when the child is between one year and uh, one and a half years. That's when we do the repair of the palate, but the lip at three months, it is done. Okay, and yeah. is it just uh, at that three months? After then, perhaps the child is already grown. Can it still be done? Yes, we have cases of adult cleft. Thirty-eight years old, when we have seen them, when we sit down the street, we invite them, and they could be done any time after three months. It could be done. Okay, so, so what yeah. what will be the advantage of bringing the baby earlier or, or doing it later? Uh, the advantage of seeing the baby early is that we are able to build up the baby. And early repair will give better results in terms of aesthetics, um, facial appearance, and in terms of function of the lip. So when we see them early, we are, and we repair early, the body will be able to mold the, all the defects into shape. So actually it's better repair early than to wait to wait till later. To wait till later. Okay, and, it um, can also be repaired later okay. when we see them. Okay, I was looking at the, the picture of um, the, the surgery, the theater there, and I see a whole lot of um, medical, the team. Yeah. 
is it a complicated kind of surgery or how long does it take and what's the what's the outcome 